Okay, these notes are history of the atom. Okay, let's talk about Democritus. Democritus was a Greek philosopher who coined the term atom. That means he was the one who came up with the term atom. The term atom comes from the Greek word atomos, which means indivisible. So basically he knew that if you kept cutting something and cutting something, finally you would get to a point where you'd get something so small you couldn't cut it any further. And that's what he called the atom. Okay, the next in line was John Dalton. Dalton came along in the 1800s and found through experimentation that compounds have a fixed composition. So he started actually with water and he noticed that if you take apart water, you get two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen every single time. So he proposed the theory that all matter is made up of individual particles called atoms, which cannot be divided. So he basically had studied Democritus and used the same term Democritus did. Okay, so let's talk about Dalton's atomic theory. Number one, all elements are composed of atoms. Two, all atoms of the same element have the same mass and atoms of different elements have different masses. Three, compounds contain atoms of more than one element, like water. In a particular compound, atoms of different elements always combine in the same way. As I said, he mainly studied water. He studied a few other compounds too, but that's where he made his Eureka idea. Okay, next in line was J.J. Thompson. Thompson did a cathode ray experiment and discovered negatively charged particles. He called corpuscles, but today we call them electrons. And that's kind of a picture of his cathode ray experiment. So Thompson's model of the atom. So he thought that the negatively charged corpuscles, now called electrons, were kind of just kind of stuck in a positively charged mass. We know that obviously this is not what an atom looked like, but back then that's all the um, evidence they had. So they based their model on what evidence they had. And this is called the um, plum pudding model. So I guess plum pudding has little spots. I would call it the chocolate chip model, truthfully. Okay, then came along Ernest Rutherford. So in 1909, Rutherford did experiments on gold atoms called the gold foil experiments. He shot positively charged alpha particles at gold foil, which went through the foil with just a few bouncing straight back. So because of this, he concluded that atoms were mostly empty space with a small, dense, positively charged center, the nucleus with protons. So basically, remember, he had th they all thought it was J.J. Thompson's model. So since it was supposed to be a big, positively charged mass, he expected most of those alpha particles to bounce back. Most of them did not. Most of them kept on going right on through. So it was like, oh, uh, whoa, wait a minute. And just a few bounced back. So we realized that it's mostly empty space with just a few, you know, with a very small positively charged center. Okay, and this is Rutherford's model. And if you look at things, um, I guess they use this for nuclear energy. This is like the nuclear energy model. They used with, it's called, the, they, I guess they use it for nuclear energy because it was about the nucleus. So, but that's the Rutherford model. Okay, now James Chadwick came along. Chadwick was a student of Rutherford's and he did some more experiments. And he's the one who discovered neutral particles that were knocked loose from the nucleus. And he called these particles neutrons for the word neutral. Okay, and a little while later, Niels Bohr. Now he's a Danish chemist, but he came along. He studied hydrogen atoms and noticed that the atoms emitted different colors of light when the electrons were excited. He concluded that electrons orbit the nucleus in energy levels and could be bumped from one energy level to another. And I think in biology, you guys have done Bohr's model. So of course the positively charged nucleus is in the center. Now, he thought that the electrons orbited in a circle, kind of like the planets orbit the sun. We have come to find out that that's not the case, but up to Niels Bohr time, this is all the evidence they had. And this was the reigning model at the time. Okay, so along came Edwin Schrodinger. In the 1920s, Schrodinger did experiments on the atom 
and discovered that Bohr was on the right track, but not quite correct. And I'm going to put a little T in there. That's supposed to be not quite correct, not no quite correct. His experiments showed that electrons do move around in energy levels, but they are not circular orbits. Electrons move around in orbitals in an electron cloud. Basically, we can't tell exactly where an atom or I mean, an electron is. We can give an estimate, but that's about it. So it's a big old electron cloud where the orbits, orbitals, by the way, are paths that the electrons move around in. So they are fixed paths, but uh, we don't know exactly where that electron is in any point in time. Okay, so let's sum up what we've learned. Let's talk about the history of the atom summary. So Democritus coined the term atom. That means he's the one who made up that term. Dalton came up with the atomic theory. Thomson discovered electrons. Rutherford discovered the nucleus and protons. Chadwick discovered neutrons. Bohr discovered electrons travel in energy levels. And Schrodinger discovered electron orbitals and the electron cloud. So if there's ever a quiz, you're going to need to know this is the summary that you're going to have to, to know or at least have it written down somewhere. Okay, so that's all about the atom. So I guess until next time, bye.